Hello friends! Now, if you have been following this channel for a while, you know that a couple of weeks back I presented this DIY video projector that I built based on an old overhead projector. And shortly after the first video, I followed up with an upgrade video to this one. You can find both of those episodes in the video description. And today in this video, I want to present a similar idea, but this time it will be based not on an overhead projector, but on another obsolete, yet much more abundant and cheap technology, a slide projector, in Germany known as a Dia Projektor. And here is the projector that I bought for this experiment. It only cost me 5 euros. And it was manufactured by Braun Photo Technik in Nuremberg. And this particular model is called Paximat S Electric. And if you go on eBay, you will find similar models for even less than 5 euros. And I guess this is a situation that will be similar all over the world. Even though I think that the situation is quite a little more extreme in Germany. And that is because if you look at this list here of known manufacturers of slide projectors from Wikipedia, you can see that a very large portion of the manufacturers came from Germany. And I really believe that Germany is much more saturated with old obsolete projectors than any other country in the world. But the last time that I remember that somebody actually used this technology must have been about 1992 or 93. <laughs> You know, when my grandpa showed us some pictures from his last trip to Gran Canaria or something like that. So even though there might be less of these projectors in other countries, I believe that the average price for a basic unit like this must be very low. And as you can see, I have started to somewhat tear down this unit. I do not want to go into the details here because this is just about a basic proof of concept or disproof if you want. And we can see here parts of the optical and mechanical system of the projector. For example, this black shutter here and also a DC motor with a little warm gear that could be used to electrically adjust the focus of the projector. So I have now flipped the projector upside down and I'm unscrewing these feet here that can be used for height adjustments similar to modern video projectors. And I remove this bottom plate here, which is really the only large part on the enclosure that was made from plastics. The entire rest of the enclosure is made from a quite expensive cast material that was also coated. So you can see here a display of very expensive production methods, even for a basic unit. And I guess that this unit was made in the 1960s. And because the light bulb is emitting a lot of heat, it was necessary to actively cool this device. And for that purpose, they inserted a shaded pole induction motor, in German Spaltpolmotor, into the bottom of the enclosure. And they manufactured just a simple fan from aluminium sheets and put that on that motor's axle. And pretty much the rest of this whole mechanism was used to switch between different slides. And you could do that with a wired remote control that was connected via a plug to the backside of this device. And by the push of a button, you could then switch between different slides. But all the parts of that changing mechanism will not be required any longer. And these parts will be in my way for the kind of hack that I have in mind here. And that's why I started to remove all the parts of that mechanism. And part of that is also this cylindrical electromagnet here in America, I guess also called a solenoid. And that solenoid, as well as the DC motor for the focusing, require, of course, DC. And that was derived via a secondary winding on the induction motor. So this is not just a shaded pole induction motor, but also a motor transformer. Something that seems rather odd, but can be found in many old German devices like tape recorders of the 1960s, for example. And this little part here next to the induction motor is the bridge rectifier that generates the DC from the AC on the secondary of the induction motor's core. And so I went on to remove all unnecessary mechanical and electromechanical parts from this device. And at the end, I also tested the light bulb. But now it was time to go over to the next phase of this project. This is a very basic digital video camera that I just ordered online for only two euros and 95 cents. And I can put a link into the video description where at least the German viewers can find something like this. 
And I had this idea for many years, but only when I unboxed this particular item just a couple of days ago, I suddenly had the feeling that it would be just the right fit for the idea that I have had for many years. But because the camera came without a battery and didn't start up when I simply attached a USB power supply, I had to solder some wires to the plus and minus pin inside the battery compartment of the camera and I then connected that to an AC adapter with a linear regulator that I set to about 4.5 volts which comes closest to a fully charged lithium ion battery. And now the camera started up and I performed a quick test and everything seemed to work just fine. And in the next step I then did all that was necessary to get the actual LCD panel out of the enclosure of the camera. And for that I first tried to remove this entire display unit and I opened it up and inside I removed the backlight from the LCD itself. In this case that is simply powered by a simple white LED. And the next step was then, you already guessed it, to temporarily attach the LCD to the projector in the place where you would typically have your slide. But before I show you any footage, please keep in mind this is just about a proof of concept. The LCD is somewhat sitting in the wrong place. It also needs to be flipped around one more time actually. So the quality will not reach what I have done before by a long shot. But let's just take a look at it. So as you can see, not the entire area of the LCD is actually to be seen in the projection, but we have a recognizable picture at all. So the idea is now to put a film onto the SD card that is of higher quality than what I filmed with this horrible camera, then maybe adjust the panel so that it sits in the optimum position. But well, let's not kid ourselves, we will not get really great quality with this 8 euro setup here, but I'm already planning for a major upgrade. So the next step will be that I will try to get a slide projector for 6x6, which is a much larger format of slides for very little money. And as soon as I have that, I will then also test it with this display here, but also look out for a better display that will fit the margins of the 6x6, which you can see here. And this is maybe one thing where you guys can help me out. So if you know about a good source for affordable LCD panels, which would roughly fit inside a 6x6 centimeter area, then please let me know it in the comment section. So as always, I hope you liked this little experiment and I hope to see you soon.